Hello, wonderful Hope family. Thank you for joining me again and joining many others who are, are going to be involved with this Pause and Pray program, this time of corporate prayer. It's great to be doing this. Uh, some people do it on the Thursday, some people do it later on in the week. Whatever time you can, it's just great that we can do this prayer time together. Just to say that um, we are going to have our next Zoom prayer meeting. Uh, it's going to be in July. It's going to be July the 9th. So you can put that in your diaries. July the 9th at 10 a.m. will be our next live Zoom prayer meeting. And uh, during the other weeks, we will be doing this pause and pray together. So let's start. And let me remind you, we've done this so often, but it's just great to do it again. Let me just remind you of what John Wilthew led us into when he uh, gave us two verses and he put them together. When you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then he spoke about in father's house, in his great mansion, there are many rooms. And so the idea came to him that there could be many different rooms that we go into to pray, which have different characteristics in natures. So we're going to do that again this time. We're going to enter some different rooms with their characteristics and use that to inspire us to pray. So we're going to start off in the adoration room. This is the room where we get lost in wonder, love and praise. It's that room for worship. It's that room in which we can pour out our love to Jesus. Now, just to inspire us, can I just suggest you do this? And that's listen to a song that's really blessed me over this lockdown period. So go to YouTube and then you just need to type in No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus. It's a song by Stephanie Gretzinger, G-R-E-T, a uh, singer with a Z to start off with, Stephanie Gretzinger, you will be really blessed by this song. And use that song just to inspire adoration. So this is now time to pause, uh, worship and pray, giving your thanks and adoration to him. Now, moving from the adoration room, we're going to go into the creative room today. And this is what I'm going to suggest that you do, encourage you to do. We are inspired by the Psalms of David and others. They stir us in prayer. Many of our worship songs are based on them. I think it would be great to expect the Holy Spirit to, to creatively give us insights so that we can write our own psalm. Now, psalms are very different nature. Sometimes they're a thanksgiving um, psalm. Sometimes they're a declaration um, psalm declaring all that God is and all that God does. Maybe it's a psalm of reflection on the way that he's worked in your life. Or maybe it's a lament. You know, uh, this is the terrible situations that I'm in, yet in the midst of that, I'm encountering God. Whichever the Holy Spirit inspires, go with. Write your own psalm. And if there's more than one of you in the household, then after this exercise, share that with one another and use it for an inspiration for prayer. One more thing. Why not send it to the office so that we can include it on our Facebook page, Stories of Hope? It would be great to have your songs that God has inspired you to write by the Holy Spirit. So pause and get creative. Thirdly, we're going to move into the listening room at uh, this time. And you know that uh, God loves to communicate to us. So often we just don't give him enough time to speak to us. So this is a time in which we can just be still. We can listen to his voice. Ask God to speak to you personally. And why not write it down again? You could share that to somebody else in um, your household with you. Then you could also ask God for something for the other people in your household. So you could prophesy to them what God has spoken to you. And then thirdly, why not ask God to put somebody in the church on your heart, ask God to speak to you for them, to encourage them, to comfort them and strengthen them. And then at the end of this session, send it to me, send them by email or WhatsApp or whatever way you communicate. Why not uh, send them that encouragement? So now it's time to pause, 
to pray, to listen and to inspire others with the prophetic that God gives you. Moving from the listening room, we're going to go into the petition room. This is where we're asking God for the many things that are stirring us at the moment. So Philippians 4, 6, you know this verse very well. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So why don't we start off first, before we do that, by just thanking God for the uh, answered prayers that you've received during lockdown. Okay, uh, let's pause and pray that, that first. Now, the next thing, why don't we, this, this, this verse speaks particularly about the things that we're anxious about, worried about, concerned about. Well, let's now bring those to God, the things that are personal to you, that are stirring you, that are just bringing disquiet to you. Leave them. Cast your cares on Jesus. So just take some time to pause and to bring those, those petitions to God right now. After that, uh, let's remember that this coming Sunday is Father's Day. So let's pray for uh, the fathers of our church. They play such a vital role in the life of their family and in society as a whole. Let's pray blessing. Let's honour the fathers and let's pray blessing on each one of them. If there's ones that particularly come to, to mind, then name them and pray for them. It's a special day on Sunday. Let's make it a special time in our prayer now. So pause and pray. Many of us have been uh, deeply moved by uh, George Floyd's situation and Black Lives Matters. I was, uh, I was uh, as a young person, I grew up in a uh, West Indian community in Gloucestershire, in Gloucester itself. And in fact, we were one of only a few white families in the whole community. And from a very early age, I experienced the pain of friends who were being discriminated against. I didn't know what that word meant, but I could see that there was hatred and bitterness being expressed to the people that I went to school with and who were my friends. Sadly, our world hasn't changed that much. We need to pray into this opportunity. There's a glorious opportunity for us to change. And we all need to change. Uh, there's not one of us who has not had a, a racial thought or a discriminating um, feeling. We need to all repent and we need to bring this to God. But we need to pray over this situation. You know, I'm thrilled that we are growing a multicultural church. But pray for those in our church where this matter is particularly a painful and, and a serious matter. Let's pray over those from many different ethnic backgrounds. Let's pray that this will really change our Western society for good. And finally, we will resolve this issue. So pause and pray. Now let's uh, turn to um, our children and our youth at our church. But let's uh, First of all, let's pray for Ben, pray for Elizabeth and Sue and their teams. Pray for all who are involved with our children and our youth. Uh, thank, we thank God for each one of them. We thank God for the creative programs that have been drawn up. But let's pray for just a spiritual advance in our kids, that they grow to be uh, devoted followers of Jesus and great lovers of Jesus. And let's pray for those who are serving them, that they will get much um, energy and wisdom as they seek to serve our children and youth. So pause and pray. We're now entering that phase where we'll be uh, discussing and um, uh, uh, we will be looking at all the uh, machinations of what it means to purchase the property. So will you pray for us to have wisdom? May we proceed in this, uh, in this direction. May there be glorious peace. May there be uh, no, no animosity and may we make glorious advance. So pray over the purchase of our building. Uh, pause and pray. 
Next, we're going to pray over how we should return to worship uh, together. There's a survey that's gone out. Please just take three minutes to fill that in. It will be so helpful. And again, will you pray for us as um, elders and deacons that we make the right decisions uh, as we come out of uh, lockdown? Now we're going to move finally to uh, the what I've called the revival room, the revival room. And um, this is a quote from Isaiah 64. This is Isaiah on the wall. He says, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. This would be a great way to finish our prayer, praying over Wyndham and the wider area that we will see such a move of God that it, we cannot contain it in our buildings or in with the number of services that we have. That there is glorious church expansion, new churches being planted, that we truly become an apostolic centre for the advance of the kingdom. Peggy and Christine Smith, in their very old age, believed God could come to their area of uh, Lewis in the Hebrides. And it was through their prayers that revival broke out. There are many examples of revival stemming out of people praying. So let's finish our time together by praying for revival and asking God to pour out his spirit again in great measure. May God richly bless you as we pray together and uh, see you next week. God bless you.